Yeah, my, my situation was a little bit unusual in that I came into the scientific career quite late in life. And as I say, I already had a child when I started my PhD, and I had a second one before I took the job at Erie. So although I was a recently minted PhD, um, I had these two children, and I think that made it both, um, both easier in some ways and more difficult in others. Easier in the sense that I never um, had that kind of univision um, luxury of just being a graduate student and, and thinking only about my graduate work. From the days I first started graduate school, I was always juggling family and career. And I never, um, I never questioned that I had the children to care for at the same time that I was trying to pursue this career. So I think I, in my own way, I had to really get in shape um, mentally and emotionally to be able to handle both. And when I went to Erie, as I had mentioned earlier, the hardest thing for my family was that the spousal employment opportunities were so limited. And I think maybe it's not that that's any more important if you're female and your spouse is male, but in those days it was taken for granted um, that, the, that the scientist worked and the spouse was somehow able to make do in an environment that did not involve professional employment. And I think as more and more women have come into the field, it's become more and more apparent, not just to Erie, but to many overseas organizations, that the employment of the second partner in the relationship is equally important to the well-being of the whole. And I know that Bob Chandler, as the first DG, recognized this. Um, but clearly, it, it, the living environment is most conducive um, to the well-being of a family if both spouses are happy. And so in my case, the upheaval was that the spouse, uh, my spouse was not well accommodated in that environment, and that eventually caused us to leave Erie. But I do think that on the other hand, the challenges of being female in science are really just in finding the right blend for that complex little society that is your family. And it's the same whether you're in the United States looking for um, a job where uh, the two of you are trying to accommodate two different sets of interests or whether you're going into the international arena. The, the questions are usually um, different for females where it comes to child rearing and childbirth, but there you just have to pick your partner, I think, and uh, that's a negotiation between you and your partner, how you're going to handle that. Giving um, credit to the, the incredible changes that have happened, I think both socially and um, in the professional climate, there are more and more women in these fields. And so there's less of a feeling that you're a pioneer now. You're not that unusual. And you don't have to feel that you're out there breaking ice or somehow representing your gender. That you're just now an individual, and th that makes it a lot easier. I think it's much more difficult when the entire culture is only one gender and you're the odd person because you do stand out. On the other hand, sometimes it's an advantage, you know? You enjoy it. Um, you're special. You're automatically noticed. Um, you get a lot more require you get a lot more obligations sometimes because people want the female representation on their committees. And I think I did serve on a lot more committees at Erie in my day than than maybe I would have to if I were there now. But on the other hand I never felt um, that I was overlooked. I, w <laughs> I always felt that people really took notice and, and tried their best to make an arrangement that would work. So, you know, I, I, I have not experienced, um, I've experienced difficulties and challenges, and I think we all do, but mine haven't really been oriented around um, the gender issue.